Welcome back to another video here on the channel. It's been a few days and I apologize for missing a couple, but as you may have seen on my community tab, I posted a little under the weather, but we're back. Uh, I didn't completely take the time off. I, I spent a little bit of time making up, oh, uh, hang on, making, making this Sims guesser. <laughs> Hi, <laughs> hello, oh, there we go. Hey, hmm. I didn't really figure out how I was gonna fit on the screen with this thing. Well, anyway, I'll cover up the back half. So you may have heard of a game called GeoGuessr, which I have actually played here on this channel before. Essentially, you get placed somewhere on the earth uh, in Google Street View, then you have to figure out on a global map where you are. There's obviously other different versions of it too, where you could just be just in the US or just in a certain city. Um, anyway, there's different scopes of it. That's the basic idea. You get placed somewhere, you have to guess where you are. Recently, I saw that someone had made a GTA version or a Grand Theft Auto 5 version of it called GTA Guesser. Same kind of thing, you get a photo from the game, you guess where you are on the map. Then Deligracy asked me to take some photos in The Sims 4 so she could guess where they were. Uh, naturally, I just decided to build the entire game instead. So welcome to my TED talk about Sims Guesser. <laughs> no, today I just wanted to sort of show you what it is before everyone can play it because this will basically just be on my website. But anyway, I'm gonna show you what I've done, how it kind of works. I think it's pretty cool. <laughs> I think it's pretty cool. So let's get into it. <laughs> I don't know why I'm yelling. I just feel like I'm small down here. Right, so eventually when this is on my website, it'll just be a page like this. You go to it, uh, Sims Guesser, how to play, and it, it tells you, you know, simple as that. Or at least I hope it's simple and hopefully it's clear. Anyway, you'll be given a location somewhere in The Sims 4. Click and drag to look around. We'll see that in a minute. Use the little world icon to choose which world you're in. On the map, click and drag. Each game consists of five rounds. You get a thousand points for guessing right. Well, you know, reading through all this might be a little confusing, so I'm just gonna click play, because this will give you the idea of how this works. So this is it. We get plonked in an area of The Sims 4, and we can pan and look around. So obviously this is somewhere in the game. You can zoom in, don't zoom in too far. And also if your screen's big enough, you'll be able to see that it is just a JPEG image. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, so I, I've basically taken a bunch of panoramic images within The Sims 4 and you have to guess where it is. So at the moment, you can see our score is currently zero. We're on round one out of five. And over here, this is our map to choose where we think this is, but you might see there's nothing on it. So what we have to do, go down here, click on this, and these are the two current worlds that I've added in. Also, I might try and make this UI look a little bit better, but anyway, it works, so it's fine for now. Oh, also, this won't really work very well on mobile. So if you do, when this, this isn't out yet, but when it does come out, if you wanna play this, currently not good on mobile. <laughs> so don't recommend that. Anyway, so you choose which world it is, uh, and then you have all the neighborhoods in that world to choose from. Now, it's a fun game to learn the names of the neighborhoods in each world because there's not really any other way I could allow you to select the neighborhoods unless I recreated the in-game maps and then you click on the map that way. Uh, so instead, it just lists the name. Anyway, you'll get used to the names. It's great. So this one, if I just close this out again, we'll have a look around. So this, we can see a few tips. This looks like, and just a heads up, uh, because I took this and there's only about currently eight different locations in it. I know exactly where this is, but this looks like uh, in my get to work rags to riches way back in the day where we met the gardener. I totally just used that. So we go Willow Creek is where I think it is. And I believe that's in Foundry Cove. And then this will load the map of the area. Now the idea here is you want to look around try and match up where you think it is. Obviously this is gonna be much harder if you choose a neighborhood that doesn't look right. You're trying to find it as close as possible. So we zoom in, we sort of look around. Does this look like that area? You know, there's a house here and four garden patches. So we've got three garden patches there, not quite right. Though we do have at the back of this house, four garden patches, hello. And there should also be a bench and a wall around like three sides and a fence which it looks like there's a fence over that side. There's a brick wall there and behind there. Oh, and there's a bench. Look at that. <laughs> so then we can sort of try and figure out exactly where we are, uh, which is pretty much right in front of this bench. So let's just go about here. Now you can't see it, but just behind me, if I slide across, the guess button is here. Once we're ready to guess, go ahead and click it. And now it gives us the result. So I got 4,000 points. That's pretty incredible because I was only one tile away. 
We guessed in Willow Creek and Foundry Cove and the actual location was there. And we can also see it on the map here. The flag is where the actual location is and uh, the pin is where we picked. Then we just go ahead and go next round. So this one is on a road. Interesting, <laughs> interesting. Yeah, so this is kind of how it works. It, it has these locations all strung together. I've essentially, I mean, I, because I've been testing this constantly, I know exactly where these are and I took these photos. So. <laughs> but yeah, you look around, you're like, okay, so there's the road here. If we look straight down it, we can see a bunch of stuff down over here. You know, we've got trees either side of this road. And at the end of the road, there's actually two houses at the same section, which is interesting. So let's have a look. Is it Oasis Springs, perhaps? No, obviously not. But just so you can see, that's <laughs> this also works this way. You sort of look around, you see the map for Oasis Springs. But yeah, Willow Creek, it's Foundry Cove again. Now, these locations are, are probably removed before I let everyone play this, because, I mean, you've all seen them exactly where they are. So oh, maybe I won't, I don't know. But I, I plan on adding a lot. At the moment, there's only seven or eight locations in here. Uh, but yeah, so this one is just about here. Here. I can't remember if it's above or below this pathway. Wait, where is it? Technically it's below, but let's see. Let's see if it actually considers it there. Yeah! Two tiles away! Look at me go! It's almost like I haven't played this and made this! Anyway, so we got 8,000 points. So basically the way the point score works. Now let's purposely choose one that's wrong. So we got a uh, playground here, a big house there. Let's choose the wrong neighborhood. Let's say it's in Magnolia Blossom. It's in the, the main park which it's clearly not because it doesn't look like this. But let's say we go here, you know, we click guess. Now, obviously, because this is in a different world or a different neighborhood, we don't get the line between, you know, where we picked and where this one is. Instead, we get shown the correct location so that we know and if it comes up again, we could learn it. And also just so we, we know where it is. And over here, it says the actual locations in Pendula View. And we still get a thousand points for this because we were still in the same world. So if you're in the same world, you get a thousand points. If you're in the same neighborhood and you're a certain distance away, you get up to 3000 points, depending on how close you actually are. If you're in the wrong world, you get no points. So that's how the scoring I've sort of worked out is. I mean, I'm open to taking feedback on how scoring should work. But yeah, so here, for example, let's say this is uh, Foundry Cove. So it's just over here. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna go up over here. Clearly wrong, we guess. And um, don't, don't mind the <laughs> positioning. Glitch. If I just click it, there we go. Uh, so here it says we're 214 tiles away. So that is a measurement of, you know, lot sizes are 20 by 30. So that's actually an in-game measurement, essentially. So it's about 200 tiles away. We get 94 points for that. <laughs> we didn't get much. We got a thousand, if you remember, for the same world. And we get 94 for that distance. If we're a lot closer, obviously we get a lot more points. So the maximum score you can achieve in this game is 20,000. So that's your perfect score. Now, if we go here, let's have a look. Hmm, interesting, interesting. Round five of five. Let's say, I think it's here in Oasis Springs in the middle of the park. Uh, obviously that was wrong and I got zero points. So yeah, so that's where that one is. Now we got a final score and then you get your final score up on the screen and then you can just go ahead and play again. So that's currently where it's at. Uh, and I gotta say, I had a lot of fun making this and I obviously there's still a few things I want to do and fix up. Uh, it's kind of the first real browser game that I've made. Also, I'm not very good at JavaScript, so I was kind of making it up as I went along. So <laughs> I don't know, if it breaks, it breaks. Maybe just refresh the page and try again. But yeah, it's probably not perfect. But anyway, then we click next game and then you'll get a new set of locations. Uh, from the last set. So this is actually a different location that we haven't done yet, which is pretty cool. But very quickly, we're going to get the same ones because I haven't added many. Now, the cool thing is, so at the moment, like I said, there's only these two worlds. Uh, if you guys actually do enjoy this, I will go ahead and add more because I've actually made it possible to easily add more worlds and more locations and all that. So because I like coding and programming, I'll show you how I can add more stuff as well, which I also built uh, so here in this section, I can add new worlds. So actually all the worlds are already added here. I just haven't added any of the neighborhoods so they don't show up. But yeah, we've got all the worlds in here. So it's really easy for me to add more. All I gotta do is go up the top, type in whatever the world name is, choose an image for it, and then just add it. Same with the neighborhoods, very similar. I essentially just have to take a bird's eye screenshot in game. So I just go in game, go up, up top, try and get as vertically down as possible because if it's at a bit of an angle, it won't be quite map like like you it'll be a little bit off but you know it goes as birds like as, as possible which also 
when you look at the base game worlds, Willow Creek and Oasis Springs, man, they look rough on the edges. The, all the newer worlds do not look this rough, by the way. So it's really interesting to see. Anyway, so yeah, to add a new uh, neighborhood, similar sort of thing. I just say whatever the name is. Uh, I say what world it's in, which I've got them all here. Then I choose the image and I say what scale the map is. So you can see here, some of these are different scales, 2.5 pixels. That's essentially just how I calculate your distance away uh, once you get your score. So that's what that is. And then likewise with locations, once I've added the neighborhoods, I can add locations in. So I'll probably remove all these locations because you've already kind of seen most of them. And also you can see the actual coordinates of them. Though I don't know how much that will actually help you figure out where they are. Cause it's kind of, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of nonsense if you don't know what it means. Anyway, so yeah, to add a new like location, for example, I go, you know what? Let's, let's just actually add a new location. Let me go into the game. Right. So I just have this new save game, uh, and I actually turn off seasons so that we don't get the weather, uh, happening. Cause otherwise that was making all my stuff like really gray and <laughs> like rainy and super annoying. So, uh, let's actually, I, I wanna, let's actually add a whole new neighborhood as well. So you can see how that works. So what we're gonna do, let's go, let's just do Hanford and Bagley, it's the new one. So we're gonna go, let's go into the town, that's a nice area. So we're gonna go to the Gnome's Arms Pub. And then what we do, just make sure the lighting, I might actually wait a little bit here, fast forward a little bit. Oh, <laughs> Batu, yeah. Oh, you better believe there's gonna be Batu in my thing. Oh, I should, why am I not adding Batu right now? <laughs> Guys, I reckon I should make Batu mode where every location is just from Batu. That'd be awesome. All right, so I'm essentially just waiting for the, the sun to sort of be up higher in the sky so we don't get such big shadows because that makes it a little bit harder to sort of see the contrast. All right, that looks a little bit better. We still got some shadows, but I think they're just going to start now going around and going the other way. So we'll still have shadows. That's fine. What we do now is press tab and essentially just go up and zoom out and do something like this. The thing is, uh, oh yeah, so the other thing I do when I, you can see on the side here, like look how stretched this building is. Um, that's because I zoomed out. Ideally, I want to be able to go up and not zoom out too much because that makes everything look more flat. So that's kind of what we try and get. And we don't want to lose too many details either because as you go up higher, you can see it just becomes really hazy and you can't really see anything. Also, we don't need to be this far out because I'm not going to put a location over here because, I mean, it's no point, really. But... I think somewhere where we can see, we need a nice mix between, you know, stretching the map or stretching the houses a little bit and being able to see the entire map. Which by the way, I'm just gonna chuck this into, there we go. I just chucked it up into 4K so the resolution's a little higher. Won't make any difference in the video, but for the actual screenshot, it does help. So I think something about here, it looks pretty good. So if we just try and line that up, get most of the points of interest within this image. And I'll just take a screenshot. Then we just open it up in Photoshop and do a few little adjustments. Whoa, that's super vibrant. Maybe that's a bit much. I just tried. So I, I usually go through the auto color and contrast to start off with. None of those look great. Unfortunately, for some reason, Hanford on Bagley. I don't know if you guys realize, but it's got a really green tint to it. Like all the lighting. Like not, not just the obvious green out here, but even if you zoom in, you know, the haze. You can see like the haze of everything over here. It's kind of, it's a little bit green. So let's see if we can just tone that out a little bit. Oh yeah, see that's before, that's after. You probably can't tell any different. Anyway, you know what? I'm not gonna go into the details of this because this is just a little bit of Photoshop work. And The Sims 4 also has a lot of like blue haze as well. Now this is just kind of turning into a Photoshop tutorial. Yeah, The Sims 4 has a lot of blue haze. Like the shadows look really blue. So you can see if you drag it down, how, how much blue is actually in those shadows. In fact, if you drag it up, look how blue the shadows are, which is all right in game, but Sometimes for context, it's better to reduce that amount a little bit. Anyway, that looks pretty good to me. I think you could use that quite well. Now, the next thing we need to do is actually resize this down to 1080p. I don't know if this is interesting to you guys. I just found this really, really fun to do and work this all out. Anyway, so the reason I, I made this 1080p is not to upload a smaller image, but because this is how I figure out the scale of the map and how many pixels we have per grid tile. So for example, we know these things here are actually the planters in town. So if we go back into the game and have a look here. So these planters are what we can see on the map. And we actually know for a fact that this is two by two. Like we know that that's what that size is. So essentially I just look for something on the image that I know the size of. So that means these guys are two by two. Then I just do a pretty crude measurement. So it's about five by five, which are probably gonna be a more accurate representation of this. It's 10 by 10. So that's actually about right. So it was five by five. And that means 
one grid tile on this map is two and a half pixels, roughly. Obviously, it's not an exact science. It's just, just a little bit of guesswork and you get the average. It's just to work out the score. It doesn't really matter that much. Anyway, now we go back to the website. Now that I got this photo, I'm gonna add a neighborhood. So we need the neighborhood name, which, uh, what is this place called actually? That's a good question. <laughs> So we can get the neighborhood names from these guys. So this is Finchwick, that makes sense. So that's what we call it. So Finchwick, this is in Henford on Bagley. And then I just select my image to upload that we took and the map scale was roughly about 2.5 pixels. So we just click submit. And then it gets added in here. We can see Finchwick, two and a half pixels a tile and it's in Henford on Bagley, which is pretty cool. Now that means if we go to Henford on Bagley here, we can actually see that we have one neighborhood to pick from shows up here and now we can add a new location. So why don't we take a new panorama as well so I can show you how that works. I don't, I don't know if you guys find this interesting, but I think it's really cool. And it also means you get to play this really cool game uh, <laughs> once it's all done. So we're gonna go back into Finchwick, which we're already in. So let's just choose a location. It doesn't really matter where, cause this is just a demonstration. So let's just say we're gonna go right here in the middle of town. So I'm just gonna go find a little spot in the middle of this pathway. And then all I gotta do is Essentially, make sure I zoom all the way out so it's as wide as possible. It looks really funny right now. You can see how it stretches everything. But trust me, this is how we want to do it. So I put it roughly in the spot I want. Then I made a little macro that will spin my camera and take four photos like that. So I've got four different screenshots at all those angles. <laughs> my sim is on the bench in this one too, that's funny. Okay, so that's pretty much all I got to do to take the photos. Then I use this app uh, called PTGY, essentially just put all the images together into a panorama for us. It should hopefully, they don't always flawlessly work, but let's see if it works. Essentially, we should just click align images. Oh yeah, there you go, look at this. And it puts it into one image for us. And then I typically just click on fill holes in the blending so we just get a full sky and the ground. So it means when you look up and down on the website, you don't see a black hole. Uh, obviously it's not perfect. It's sort of just blurring an average of the colors together, which I think is better than nothing. Uh, I could take additional photos up and down, but there's not really much point because it doesn't give you any more information, especially not of the sky. That'd be a waste of taking a photo. Anyway, that's kind of all I have to do here. So just close that. And then I just say create panorama, JPEG, and that's done. It's, uh, it's already saved the image. So now I can close this. All right, so back on the website, uh, this location we took was just about here. And now I just use the file, which is just in my screenshots folder. So this one here, the panorama and I go submit, it does its magic, and now it's added. Now, that's it, that's all I gotta do. Now I go back to the game and let's hope we actually get it. I'm just gonna refresh until I actually get it. <gasps> Here it is, <laughs> that, was, that was actually not too hard. So now it's in the game. So now I can see it on the website. Oh, there's my sim. <laughs> so, I mean, I find this really cool. It means I can add a bunch of locations. Obviously it's not instant. It's gonna take a lot of time if I wanna add like, let's say if I even just wanna add a hundred locations, which is not that many. It's obviously going to be quite time consuming, but obviously I don't have to add the neighborhood every time. I just have to, you know, take a new photo, select where it's going to be. And you can see, like I said, if you look up, uh, you can obviously see where that seam is, but I think it's better than looking at just a black hole and saying <laughs> downward when you're on a pathway does look a little strange. Uh, so don't worry about that. Usually if you're looking at, you know, eye level that the photo was taken, I think that works perfectly fine. Oh, Kim. Yeah. So that's that. Then now because we have the new neighborhood added, we can go to Henford on Bagley. There's only one because it's the other one we added. And we can choose where we think it is. And you can see we've got the new map here too. So, hmm, where could it be? Could it be here? I think so. Oh man, I was wrong. <laughs> I was 180 tiles away, which actually what we can do is we can try and sort of guesstimate the, uh, the size, uh, the scaling to make sure we got it roughly about right. So our location is here. And we know the edge of this lot is 20 pixel or 20, 20 tiles. So if that's where our location is, if we go roughly about what I think 20 tiles would be, if we just shifted it along, so maybe about there, that looks about the same length that we have here. I mean, I can measure it in a better way, but let's see. 17, that's really about right. So the scale is obviously not an exact science, but it sort of gets in the ballpark. It's close enough. Um, and that friends is Sims Guesser, is Sims Guesser. Guess up. <laughs> yeah, I had a lot of fun making this. Um, now is essentially the time that I need to just add a bunch of locations and then I'll probably do a video actually playing it if you want to see it. If not, Delhi is definitely going to be doing a video on it. I think Gluon will probably play it. Uh, hopefully a few other people. And then once I'm sure it actually kind of works, I'll uh, make it public. 
I actually don't know if this is good. I don't know how many people could actually play this without breaking my website because it's just a, a web server. So I don't I don't know. <laughs> it might be fine. It might be totally fine. I don't know. I might be overthinking it. But, you know, if when this goes public, my website crashes, it's because it's I didn't make it very well. But I had fun. And that's all that matters. Uh, I think that's all I need to mention about it. Um, yeah, that's probably it. Oh, if you have any uh, any suggestions or feedback, feel free to let me know in the comments down below. Uh, as for the world selection menu, I'll try and make that look better. I mean, no promises. It Look, it takes a lot of time. <laughs> Just, I'm learning it as I go, so I don't know. I mean, for now, it all it all works. And that's that's what I'm happy with, because if I change something and I break it, that'll be much worse. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you enjoyed looking at sort of how this is put together and how I can add new locations um, and how it works. Because I had so much fun doing this. It was a fun little project. And now I just got to add a bunch of different places to it. Uh, but tomorrow we'll be back with a regular video. Uh, we'll do some Cottage Living Ranks of Riches tomorrow. So look forward to that. Hope this different video after the short break it wasn't too jarring, but I hope you're excited for uh, Sims Guesser as much as I am, because I think it'll be fun. And when you guys can all play it as well, I think it'll be fun. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time and have an awesome day.